Welcome to Trick Your CNC Out, where we talk about the various ways you can improve upon the stock configuration of your Winfandy Elite. Today, upgrade your drag chains. So let's talk about drag chains. First, we'll start with the stock drag chain. This has an inside dimension of 15 by 20. It is great that they included a drag chain with the system. It is by far, in my opinion, the most elegant way to carry your cables around as the machine jogs from one coordinate to another. Um, it's just not much good for more than the stock configuration. And that's, that's maybe a little bit harsh. Uh, you can fit a spindle cable in here and you could fit a laser cable in here. I tried also to put the airline for the air assist for the laser and that was really pushing it. And actually I found it that it was squishing the airline and uh, reducing its airflow. So I thought that was just not gonna, that wasn't good enough. I had to do something different. Now, there's also the option to do um, clips on this. Uh, they just attach to this and they carry the coolant lines you have here for your spindle, if you have a water-cooled spindle. And that's a great option to add that. And I actually initially had zip tied the airline to the coolant lines and uh, that did okay for a little bit but what happened over time was the weight of the coolant just sort of pulled this really narrow based drag chain to the side or to the back actually and it uh and it caused problems it put a lot of weight on the connections up here to the traveler and that it eventually snapped loose and uh that would then the things would did would jam and cause alarms and it was a bunch of problems for me. And I knew that once Pwn CNC announced the ATC that I was gonna buy an ATC and that I had to come up with a permanent solution and whatever I was doing with this just wasn't gonna do it. So, uh, not a surprise probably, I went overkill. Um, I bought uh, the 25 by 90 drag chain that I have installed in this machine and it is really nice, but it is really expensive. I think that's $22 a foot, and I think you need 11 lengths, which are probably slightly larger than a foot. Um, but that, that ends up adding up. Um, for a foreman, 22 times 11, whatever that comes to, that's just for the drag chain. Then you also have to have the brackets and the trough and all that, and it adds up to quite a bit to have the drag chain on there. And what I found is that this size of drag chain is just unnecessary for anything you're going to do on this machine. And I'll show you a picture of what it looks like uh, with all of the cables that I have in there. And uh, to be, you know, completely transparent, like with what I have in there, I have all the stock cables, the spindle cable, the ATC motor sense cable, I have the coolant lines, I have the, which are 10 millimeters. I have the three air lines for the tool changer. Those are, I believe are all six millimeter lines. Um, I have the JTEC power cable for the laser. I have the, I think it's a four millimeter line for the air assist. I have a eight millimeter line for my air blast. I have two six millimeter lines for my dust boot. I have a control cable for the dust boot and that might do it. Uh, I think that's everything that's in there. Um, but that still fits in the much smaller, uh, but probably appropriately sized 18 by 50s. And I was referencing some of these on Amazon for a long time for people to uh, who didn't want to spend the money on the big ones and realize, hey, that's probably unnecessary. Everything really does fit in the 18 by 50s. But um, those kept going out of stock and discontinued and had problems there. So I actually bought uh, a bunch of this stuff that I can sell now bundled with the brackets. So if you buy the 18 by 50 brackets and you would like to at the same time purchase the drag chains, I'm actually packaging these in the lengths that you need for each of the systems. So for a woodworker, a journeyman or a foreman, you don't have to figure out how many meters you need. You just specify the model you have and I'll, I'll send you the right drag chain for it. Now, um, I can't do that on these big guys because I don't know why anybody would buy these and they're too expensive to stock when they shouldn't be selling in volume. 
So these were the first ones that I had and they did the job for me and some others got them too and they're going to have overkill size drag chains and, and you know, they can brag to their friends about it like I probably will. But, um, but the 1850s do just fine. And um, if I didn't already mention, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this as well to see so you can see what it looks like with all of that cabling in there. Here you can see the 1850 holding all of my cables and I have it actually sitting inside the 25 by 90. You can see the 25 by 90 is much larger and I'll show you again here in just a minute what that looks like without the 18 by 50 in there and you can see just how much extra unused space there is. Here we are looking at the 25 by 90 filled up with everything I have and you can see it's not even using half. So if this is a 25 by 90, a 25 by, I don't know, 35 or 40 is probably enough. And the 1850 works just fine. Now, I, I also looked for something that was sort of in the middle, uh, a middle ground. I thought early on that, you know, before I had the ATC and all this other stuff connected up, that maybe I'd need more room than what the 1850 had. So I looked for 25 by 77s and I found a number of these you know, Chinese manufactured units that are, you know, look like this or very similar to this on Amazon. And they some of them are pretty expensive, but man, they're poor quality. Um, they're extremely difficult to, to disassemble and they're brittle. So you're potentially going to break them. Uh, I did break them when I, when I took them apart and I actually was trying to follow the instructions for, for, for disassembly. They don't really lay very flat and, um, and they're still... Oh, probably twice as big as you, what you really need. So uh, I don't recommend these to anybody. I'm not going to, I could have made brackets for this and I was set to do it, but my experience with them was so poor that I just didn't want to support them and recommend these to people. Now I did find another type of bracket or another type of drag chain. It's a little bit bigger. It's the 25 by 50. And this is made by the same company that makes these 18 by 50s. Um, I'm not stocking these yet, but I think these are a reasonable choice. If you would like a little bit of extra room on top of loading all of the stuff that I have, which I think is like just about everything you'd realistically load into this machine, you could do this and have some extra room with, an eight, with a 25 by 50. So this is reasonable. It's a little bit more expensive. It might maybe it's 40% or so more than what these uh, 18 by 50s are. And it's a little bit overkill, but it's not terrible overkill. So this is something, if there's interest in these, that I would be willing to buy a batch of and stock and then ship again in the right links for this for these machines. So if you are interested in the 25 by 50s and you would be someone who would purchase those if I had them, let me know in the comments and if I get enough of that, I will uh, add support for these. So um, a lot there with the different options for drag chains. Um, next, let's look at the brackets themselves. So with the big guys, I mean, they're basically the same kind of structure for each of them. They have travelers. There's one like this for the X axis and there's one like this for the Y. And what happens is, not surprising, these things connect on and, um, and this just moves back and forth along the axis. Um, these have mount with two holes into the back of your gantry blocks. So those holes are already there. That's just part of the stock configuration. They're actually using this hole already, uh, or at least, at least the mating hole for this one for the stock drag chains. Uh, we're just using the one on the other side as well. And then um, to hold the trough, we have two L brackets like this, and they're set up so that the offsets are just right. So you get the, the you know enough clearance, but not too much clearance. And um, they fit very nicely in the contours of the feet here. So these, these uh, actually, is that right? Yeah, into the contours of this block in between the feet of the axis. Um, so they, um, they are form fitted so that the cable connectors, whether it's on the X or the Y axis, they bolt on in the same manner they do in the stock configuration. So there's nothing you have to change there. You just mount 
one on one side of the axis, one on the other side, and mount your, your cable box onto this, uh, this threaded insert here. And then um, these are, you know, took a bit of design work and some trial and error to get them right, but I got them, I got them right. And there's, that's the 25 by 50s, and here are the 18 by 50s. And they're actually a little bit different uh, depending on whether it's a, a 35 millimeter y-axis or it's a 50 millimeter y-axis. So I need to know the model type when you order so that, so that you uh, get the ones with the right, all the right offsets and, uh, and the, they fit your machine perfectly. And before I forget this, one thing I should mention, on um, these smaller 1850s, the appropriately sized 18 by 50 brackets, I've just lowered the price on them. So if you're if you're in the market, but you've been holding back because of cost, feel feel good knowing that you don't really need the 25 by 90s. 1850s are going to do great, and they're they're much less expensive. And uh, also that the price has been reduced a little bit on the 18 by 50 brackets, so you have a a much more affordable solution available now. So um, installation process, pretty straightforward. Uses all the same hardware that, that uh, came with the stock configuration. The one exception is I send um, some M, M5 bolts and 10 millimeters to mount these. I probably don't need to. Um, you, maybe I can only send two, but I send four just to have a matching matching set there and then uh and then there's a threaded or a nylon inserted nut that inserts into the back of these guys to mount them and uh so i, I ship those as well other than that though um uh, all the same stock hardware i'm probably duplicating a little bit i think you probably end up with a couple extra nylon inserts and a couple extra m5 bolts but better safe than sorry i'd rather ship you matching stuff and have a have a perfectly looking kit with that though, I think we pretty much covered it. Um, if you've noticed anything in the in the video that is pretty exciting coming up, um, mention that in the comments. Um, I've got a project I've been spending a lot of time on lately. I'm, I'm really close to the finish line. I think later this afternoon, I should have it uh, fully working and just missing a couple fine tuning tweaks. But uh, pretty exciting product coming up.